Well, welcome back. A Broadway blockbuster, the Nederlander Group, one of the largest proprietors of Broadway theaters, is selling three of its theaters in major U.S. cities in Detroit, San Francisco as well. Joining me right now to talk about these iconic uh, theaters for sale, one of Broadway's most influential insiders, Barron International Group Chairman and CEO, Lizbeth Barron. Liz, it's great to see you. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Maria. It's good to be on the air again with you. So let's talk first about this deal, and then I want to get your take broader from 30,000 feet about what's going on with Broadway and the business there. These three theaters that are being sold by Nederlander are some of the most iconic theaters, right? They are, and it's actually three that are being sold and two more that are being managed. And so this package of five uh, is a rarity. Uh, you know, there are very few regional theaters, in, in, whether it's the United States or around the world, that ever come up for sale. Um, many of them are owned by municipalities. Very few are in private hands. And so, uh, you know, in New York, there are only 40 theaters that exist on Broadway, same number in London. And most of those are in the hands of just three or four players. So it's, uh, it's unusual indeed. Yeah, I mean, these theaters and this deal uh, acquired by International Entertainment Holdings Limited, this was a, a, a deal that you led and continue to lead in this industry. I want to get your take on the broader situation of theater. Liz, I know that live just cannot be matched. When you look at live in sports, it's the same thing. That's why you pay a premium for live. Talk about the, the, uh, the industry right now and assess where you see the growth? Well, I, I think that what we're seeing from a buyer standpoint, and you mentioned uh, the International Entertainment, which is Ambassador Theater Group, um, they are one of a few uh, global players who have deep pockets who are looking to expand their footprint, particularly in the United States. And um, we initiated the transaction. We felt that um, it would be the right home for these assets. Um, San Francisco and Detroit are, are two of the top 10 theater markets uh, for touring in the United States. And um, I think it's, uh, uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's intriguing that there are private equity groups like Providence Equity and Silver Lake Partners who are backing ATG, who had the foresight and the adventure to go out and do this, uh, given where we are in, in the, the pandemic. Um, I think that when you, when you talk about the recovery of where we are and how manageable the recovery will, the recovery will be, it's important, I think, to note that the first thing that has to happen is for the government in the United States and in these cities to lift the restrictions on capacity. We are really well behind the rest of the world in that regard. And this is not like the movie theater business, where 30 or 40 percent of the seats can be filled and still make a profit. Um, on Broadway or in the West End of London, because of the cost structure of productions and overhead and union contracts, you really need 80 or 90 percent of seats filled in order to make a living. And, um, and that's something that's, that's going to be uh, addressed as quickly as possible um, so that um, theater goers feel comfortable going back. Um, from um, yeah, I the think standpoint the... of... Go ahead. Uh, so, you know, in New York, 65 percent of Broadway comes from international tourists. And that's going to take a while to come back. Therefore, the local patrons have to start feeling comfortable that the protocols are in place and it's safe. And that's not just for Broadway, that's all forms of, of live entertainment. And I think in order to, just like with the movie business, to attract people to take those um, leaps of faith, um, it needs to be blockbuster, blockbuster high quality product. Uh, there can't be middle of the road programming. It needs to be the, the Harry Potters, the Hamiltons, the Book of Mormon, um, even big movie franchises like The Devil Wears Prada or Mrs. Doubtfire that are coming down the pike as well. And that's what's going to be necessary, I think, to, uh, to get a full recovery. Yeah, I, I think you make great points. And you, and you believe that the regional theaters will be the ones that come back first. A great point that you can't have 30 percent capacity uh, on Broadway. You need 80 percent. But you mentioned London. Talk to me about what's going on internationally, Liz, because I know that we spoke on the phone and you said Sydney is killing it right now. You've got some high-profile uh, plays uh, there, and, and, and they're bringing in the audience. Uh, tell me about what Korea did right and where where you see the uh, the action happening uh, around the world. So Korea was very early in March of 2020. 
Korea really led the world in safety protocols. They tested 50 million people uh, within 60 days, uh, giving them, you know, 20, you know, 24 hours of test notices. They locked down talent. Uh, they did all of the right things in terms of spraying patrons and thermal camera testing. Um, and then in, in Australia, which is now leading the charge, the government there has just in the last, you know, number of weeks uh, allowed for 100 percent capacity. And so you have uh, just three days ago, um, Hamilton debuted in Sydney to record numbers, big advance sales. Uh, in Melbourne, same thing. Um, Harry Potter, uh, their Moulin Rouge is opening up in the next couple of months. Um, and so uh, Australia really will be quite uh, the gateway to watching the rest of the world. In London, Andrew Lloyd Webber um, has really been the, the major leader for this sector. Um, he was early in getting a COVID test as a guinea pig almost for the experimental test um, and also the vaccinations. And so he was trying to show the efficacy and the lack of side effects. So from a medical standpoint, um, he was doing that. From a business standpoint, he's doing also something unheard of, which is opening three shows all in one month in July in London. Um, Cinderella uh, and Joseph and the Technicolor Dreamcoat, as well as uh, the Phantom of the Opera. And so Liz, that's, uh, I know I, I, you, uh, in terms of America, you think we'll open next year or you think that we will have success at the end of this year? I know that officials in the U.S. are expecting to open up Broadway by the end of the year, but you've been, you, you, you've been somewhat cautious. Real quick. Well, Mayor de Blasio wants everything to open and is trying to open it by September. I think it's more like January, um, but I think that the regional theaters are going to lead the way because it's, the ticket price points are lower, the lack of travel is required, and they're very loyal.